Guys, you ready? Wow. Ow, he got me. I never feel more alive than when I'm on the end of something that could potentially kill me. I've been bitten probably 100,000 times by snakes. Whoa. The truth is, is that I get to live my dream every day. Ready, girl? Come on, you wanna go in? Come on in, it's the Repterum. I can't wait to show you guys around, I tell you what. This is basically the compilation of my dreams here. My name is Brian Barczyk and I own over a thousand reptiles. Yes, we have this crazy snake right here. That's right, they have two heads. This is Ben and that's Jerry. Ben and Jerry, the two-headed snake. My main mission in life is to get people to love the animals that are often feared and hated and that's of course reptiles. This is Sunrise. This is an albino Burmese python and she's a puppy dog and loves kids, loves being handled. We've got frogs, we've got this cool chameleon, super cool, even more big snakes on this side. This is Lucy. She's a 20-foot reticulated python, not always in the best of moods. We have Flamin' Hot Cheeto, the bearded dragon from Australia, Zombie, the Chilean rose-haired tarantula, an uh, Argentine blue tegu, he just loves to lick your hand. This is Matilda. She's gonna live up to 200 years. So my great-grandchildren one day be taking care of Matilda. People ask me all the time if I have a favorite animal, and I always tell people, it's like asking a mother of three who their favorite kid is. Each animal is special to me. But I will say, uh, the one animal that really has my heart is Bella, the rhino iguana. Come and see daddy. That's my girl. She's like my cat. Have you ever seen a reptile come to her name before? That's right, that's what Bella does. She just loves being petted. Later today, we're gonna be moving some animals into new exhibits. I've been working with reptiles as my main full-time job for 32 years. I've been bitten probably 100,000 times by snake. What are you gonna do? Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ow, oh. he got me. Working with animals, you're gonna get bit. That's part of it. Stop. I've been passionate about reptiles since I was two years old. I saw a snake at a local zoo, and I've been obsessed ever since. I always tell people, sometimes you're just born with the gene, right? I couldn't imagine life without every day working with my family. I met my wife Lori when I was 18 years old and she was afraid of reptiles. Uh, she wouldn't even come in my basement. I have been working with animals ever since I met Brian. Prior to that, I never really messed with or you know liked reptiles at all. When my kids were born, they actually were just kind of you know part of the crew. My son has worked with us ever since he could walk. I'm 20 years old now. The business has been around for over 30 plus years. So right when I came out the womb, I was handling snakes. He's learning. All right, guys, today we are going to be working with some alligators. Noah hasn't been uh, as excited about alligators, but he's Listen, getting much better. So what would happen, first say, if I was trying to grab one of these gators and like it grabbed my finger or something? Well, I made the mistake one time of a gator this size, just wanting to see how it would be to get bit, Ooh. right? And so I put my index finger in one of its mouths. I wouldn't suggest anyone doing yeah. that. When you start working with alligators, you know, you have to be careful because of course there could be a danger. Oh God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! Careful. Ah, whoa! I just got bit by one of them! Okay. We ready? Oh, God! Almost got... Just gotta, you're hesitating. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. There you go. Look at now that! There it is. Gator boss right here. You see that? Wow, I'm actually impressed with myself here. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's try to get another one. I think try to get another one. Just that was this not good enough? Again, I just want you to know, is it no heads? Whoa, careful. Death roll, death roll. Death roll, death roll. Right, we got Jeffy, put it back. All right, all right. Go, baby. There we go, there we go. You're gonna have to be on top of it, so. Uh, oh, really, that's gonna be my job? Yeah, why not? Okay, sounds good. Ah, and I got this one now. Woo! All right, I'm gonna put this guy back now. Woo! All right. You did really good. I mean, I think that you're, you know, the fact that you're stepping up is, is fantastic. Awesome. It, I it's tried. really about just like overcoming that fear. Do I see myself taking on the business when my dad retires? I, I think I definitely will. It'll definitely be a part of my life forever. 
Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. Today we're gonna to be moving a bunch of animals into their new enclosures. I started YouTube in 2008 and uh, I had no idea what was gonna happen, but it's been life changing to me. Really, YouTube is my primary job. But just wait to see what some of these enclosures are gonna look like. It is so next level. It's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. We've been working on this Reptarium expansion for the last four months. I mean diligently, 18 hours a day for the last four months without a day off. The first time we opened the first Reptarium, uh, we were a little bit on a budget. Uh, this time we decided to go like full on zoo cages. So like a, a, an enclosure like this is about $15,000, but we can move animals in, get some waters in here, and, uh, and then the fun begins. We have a few animals like our albino alligator that is just getting a little larger for her enclosure. So so she'll probably be the first one I move in. All right, time to move salt and pepper. Of course, salt is the albino alligator. Just really gentle. Calm down, girl, calm down. Now, pepper is not as nice. Like, come on, pepper, come on, baby. Come on, baby. So this one, this one doesn't like to be handled. You have to be a little careful because this guy will nip you. Uh, and it's at that size where it's not fun to get hit by. Okay, okay, come on. But it's gonna love its new enclosure. So what do you say we go take these over? Whoa, Let's whoa, do it. I'm ready. calm down, Pepper, calm down. Pepper is a monster, but I love this animal. Now they're gonna get an opportunity to have a pretty, whoa, whoa. a pretty large enclosure. I'm just gonna go ahead and release Pepper first. Pepper, hey, 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 calm down. There you go, there you go. Whoa, come on now, come on now, go. There it is. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Right. Let's go ahead and release Salt now. Come on, Salty. Ready, girl? Come on, you wanna go in? There you go, sweetheart. Oh, and there way they go. Now look at how much space they have. Pepper is just swimming around like crazy. Look at him. Oh my gosh, that is so absolutely incredible. I mean, my dream is coming true every minute that we put a new animal in. Ultimately, the grand finale is moving the anaconda. It's got a mind and a will of her own. Come on, big girl. Come on, baby. There you go, Noah. You got her? Yeah, I got the front. All right. You know, you don't really know with an anaconda how it's gonna go. <laughs> These are big, strong, powerful animals. I mean, there's certain areas in the Philippines where as much as 20% of the male population have been attacked by reticulated pythons. When you get into a 20-foot constrictor, it has the power to really be dangerous. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's okay, you guys hold go. the back for a second. All right, I got it. Come on, big girl. There you go, sweetheart. There you go, baby. Oh my gosh. I don't even know where she's going. I'm gonna put her in the water. I just have to see if she's gonna like it. Come on, sweetheart. Come on, baby. All right, guys. Woo! We did it. So we got the animals moved in. I mean, the the place really comes to life oh, yeah. now that there's animals in the habitat. Yeah, can't wait to open and show people the new part. People are gonna freak out, and it's uh, it's wild to think that you know it just started with just you know a vision of it, and now here we are. This is absolutely a dream come true. I just want it to be big, well known. People, when they think of reptiles, I want them to think about the reptarium. Brian's one that literally every day has another idea, so for the life of me, I don't even want to think about what the future could hold, but I know whatever it is, it'll definitely be an adventure. I mean, I couldn't imagine a normal life going to a normal job. I get to live my dream every day, and, and I love the fact that I don't conform to what people think I should do. I get to do what I love, and uh, I couldn't imagine it any other way. She's a little bit thinking about biting me right now. People ask me how many times I've been bitten. I honestly ask them, how many times have they farted? And they go, that many? And I go, probably more. <laughs> oh, I gotta be careful. Ow. Come on. Hey, you're coming out, aren't you? My name's Jay Brewer, and I really like snakes. You get what I'm saying? 
I own this place called the Reptile Zoo, and it's been a childhood dream, and it's got all kinds of crazy, cool, crazy animals in it. I said crazy twice. We got tarantulas, spiders, we got all kinds of different kinds of snakes. So right over here are actually my gators. This iguana is insane. This is Rex. <laughs> There's so many kinds of snakes. We got tortoises, and then we got some really cool stuff over this direction. Look at this. This wasn't, this isn't very thought out. <clears throat> okay. This snake here is actually an anaconda. It's eating its breakfast. <laughs> Hopefully this is B-roll, but whatever. But those aren't my biggest snakes. So I think we need to get out a big snake. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna actually measure my favorite snake. It's a reticulated python. I really just wanna know how much she's grown in the last six months or a year. So I'm gonna pick up the front. Come on, girl. Come on. This is my oldest daughter. She was literally born here. <laughs> what, did I, I took two days off? <laughs> Actually, you were born and the next day you had to come to work. One day off. <laughs> There's all these silly little photos of me like two years old in diapers carrying around snakes all around me. Laura is like the CFO. I mean, she's not like the CFO. She's literally the CFO, AKA president. I joke and I say that I make sure the place doesn't burn down. Okay. The other side, the other side. Right up here, less picking up. There you go, right there. <laughs> okay, you go all the way over there. We'll see if she wants to go along with this measuring. Come on, girl. Now let's see if we can get you to straighten out. You want to go that way? This is where it gets a little complicated because we want her to do something she's not wanting to do. Oh, this is where it all goes wrong. This is where it goes wrong. Why are you, what are you trying to get me to do? I'm in charge. When you're dealing with an animal that's capable of wrapping around a 200 pound wild boar and killing it and eating it, how do you outmuscle a muscle? I mean, it's a solid muscle. I mean, you can see. <laughs> then come back there, Laura. Give her a chiropractor adjustment. We're going to have to call it 19 foot 11 inches is what about I got out of that. It's actually more than that because I can't get that kink out. Just under 20 feet. We tried a lot of ways to measure a snake and it's, it's not easy. Oh my gosh. All this started from a childhood dream. I think I like reptiles because I found a lot of comfort. When I was a kid, I just, I had nothing. Coming from an orphan background, I spent more time than most kids would ever spend outside. Seeing the different kinds of animals was really fascinating to me. I just decided that I wanted to do something different for a living, and I basically bought a small pet store that had a little bit of reptiles, and eventually it turned into the reptile zoo. I found that a lot of people are really interested in things that they're scared of. Come on, girl, come this way. See, so right there, you see that? She's a little bit, she's a little bit thinking about biting me right now. So what I have to do in order to prevent her from getting escalated into a problem is I'll just take her hunt, take her perfect target away, and I'll touch her for a minute. And now I'm back to normal snake. But she would have struck me right in the face if I'd have kept going forward. Jay's to the extreme, so I sort of reel him in a little bit. Laura's gone, right? <laughs> Come on. You don't want that, do you? Come on. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. This one's quick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You don't want this, do you? Come on. Come on. Well, hey, that's my foot. Come on. There you go. Come on. Look at that. That is cool. <laughs> Anything venomous is truly dangerous. Anything non-venomous, come on, we'll put you back together. <laughs> it is. Oh. And we'll see this. Uh-oh. Oh, I got to be careful. <laughs> Ow! We've had to have a few stitches here and there. Today, we're actually gonna do a Gaboon Viper video for YouTube and Instagram. Have you ever been bitten by one of these guys? God, no, and I hope I never am or anybody that ever works for me. A venomous snake you don't wanna get bitten by. 
I almost died from a venomous snake in the wild. I have to invest all my years of experience into staying calm, cool, collect. Okay, you guys, so check this out. Gaboo vipers have long fangs, the longest fang of any venomous snake in the world. So I'll be a little bit careful. Is that incredible or what? These are actually one of the fastest vipers there are, especially left to right. So I want to go ahead and block this direction. Come on, girl. Look at that. Now, a girl like this can sport a solid two inches long fangs, and the amount of venom that they can actually shoot at one time out into their prey is astonishing. Look how incredible that is. Is that an incredible snake or what? The rule of dangerous snakes is real simple. Don't mess with them. Look cool? Huh? I'm not giving you a good shot. What? Well, you ready? Yeah. It can't come towards you at all. I don't want you to get too close to it. Come on! Push the damn button! That's as close as you can get. Okay, I'm done. Come on, girl. Back in. We survived. So right over here are actually my gators. We've raised these from babies. So we got, this is Darth, right here. Huh, boy, huh, 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 Darth. <laughs> They're all looking like, hmm, hmm, Scooby Snack? Huh, huh? It's gator hating time. <laughs> come on, come on, boy, come on. Okay, oh, 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 oh. Ain't supposed to get the tongs. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey! Okay. I thought we had a little reality series gonna happen. Sure. Now the good news is if he'd have come out, that's why Tim is right there. Because at the end of the day, we gotta make sure he doesn't go that way. If he does, that's when I have to jump in and deal with it. Okay. Oh, okay, come on. Come on. Oh. Wow. How's that for a snap? Did you hear that, Laura? Mm -hmm. That was crazy. I'm watching you. This iguana, he's like, just just scratch my back, would you? <laughs> I never thought I'd be successful. I never, I, I always knew I was gonna try, uh, but I never thought I could do this well. I mean, I've been able to work with my family. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but this, it's a big deal to me. Want another bite? Huh? I'm hungry too. Mmm. There you go. So Beckham's part of the family. Starting from what I consider pretty close to the bottom, how can a little kid that literally was orphaned at 14 and had 500 bucks and nowhere to live dream that big? You know what I mean? Living the dream is literally allowing yourself to take the risk to find your way in life. Share the love, guys. Peace out. My name is Carson, I'm 10 years old, and I love to play with big snakes. Boom! Oh, Froggy, he's a monster. Isn't he just gorgeous? Oh, but Froggy beat me right on the hand. Woo! That's gonna leave a mark. Maisie's an albino, and she is super long. My first snake was a Sinaloa and milk snake I got for Christmas, and now my collection has got so big, I have an albino corn snake, that's five, six. This is actually part of Maisie's poop, right in there. So you can tell that she can't digest the fur, so she just pooped it out. Look at that. Carson started working with animals when he was really young. He um, developed an interest when he was probably 18 months, two years old, he knew lots of facts and tips about it, started collecting a lot of little animal toys, and then that's just really grew and grew until now they're no longer toys, they're the real thing. <laughs> what cool fact about the bearded dragon is that they'll actually, with their defense mechanism, they'll make their self look big, they'll stand on their hands as tall as they can, and they'll, what their predator, if the predator's coming at them, they'll be like, oh I see you, if you come in near me, I'm gonna bite you. And they can be very territorial with other males. 
Love you, Beardy. I want to be like Steve, or I want to go around the world and do like documentaries and stuff. Woohoo, he is beauty. Now, this guy, why he has those triangular teeth, because he's insectivorous, meaning that he likes to only eat insects, and that's about all he eats. Let's move on to the next animal. Steve Irwin had a huge impact on Carson, and he does like to do animal shows, and he loves to drop, you know, crikey, or, you know, just some quotes that he's heard. G'day, mates! G'day, mates! G'day! Woohoo! Reptiles rule! Home oh, animals. Does the beard, the um, tortoise eat this? Squash? Oh, yeah. yeah, you have to cut it up in small bits. The snap and tear, I'll always have to watch what I'm doing because he strikes so fast and you just have to be really careful what you're doing. But not really, he's really the only one that really gives me kind of the chills. Let's see if he's in there. Oh, I feel him. Just kidding. Oh, here he is. I've been bitten and scratched by a bunch of different animals. Snakes, lizards, turtles. I've been peed on by frogs. And I've actually been bit on the pinky by a gerbil. Right here is the Sinaloa and milk snake. He's one of my favorites. Now the Sinaloa and milk snake, they're native to Mexico. They like to live in the desert. Oh, but crikey, bit me right on the hand. Woo! Oh! Crikey, that hit. Ooh, that's gonna leave a mark. Now, what I didn't do is what you don't need to do is when he bit me, I didn't jerk my hand away. And because if I jerk my hand away, I would have ripped his teeth out. And then he would have got an abscess and that would have been my fault. Let's put him up because he's very angry. He got bit in the face by a, um, a gecko one time. But when he gets bit by the snakes, they're never like, I don't think they bite him, like fully bite him. Like it's usually just like a couple little small. My friends like interacting with the animals a lot. They help me out with feeding typically the lizards, the turtles, the frogs, and sometimes they'll help feed the snakes. Does anybody think, know what Beardy eats? Um, worms and crickets? Yes, feel his back. I like turtles. Do they live in water? No, he actually lives on the land. He lives in a continent named Africa, and he has those claws and those armor-plated arms right there to help him burrow, and, oh, he's pink. Basically, these toes right here, if he didn't have those, he would fall off, and he wouldn't be able to stick onto the trees. Does, his, um, does he stick to a window? Yeah, they can stick to windows. Carson is, he's a strong-willed child, so he has a, a very um, bright pr personality, I guess you'd say. Kind of talks about being a vet, but really he's kind of part of conservation efforts is really his goal. Protecting animals and, mm -hmm. you know, educating others on the importance of, you know, protecting certain species. And how that happens is something called global warming. I'm very proud of him and what he's been able to accomplish at such a, at such a young age. It's pretty incredible.